My name is Carter Terenzini. I am the town administrator here in Templeton. And the next hour or so is a show called Talk of the Town, in which we chat about uh, issues that are facing the community and introduce you to many of our department heads and the services they offer. Uh, today, my guest is Diana Morrison, who is the director of the Senior Center uh, up off of uh, Bridge Street, correct? Yes. And so, uh, Diana, let's chat a little bit uh, with folks about why you do this work, what interests you in it, what caused you to work your way towards becoming our executive director here. I've always been in my family a caregiver and it just was a natural, it seemed like a natural um, trans way to go. It was just, it became my passion and it's, it's something I've always wanted to do. It, um, so how long have you been uh, the director? Three, three and a half years. Okay. And you've been in the new facility for roughly how long now? All, um, three and a half years. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, okay. So uh, I know that you've got the, uh, the facility up there off of uh, Bridge Street, kind of pretty much across from Light and Water. Yes. Is it? And it sits behind, what's the name of that complex there that it sits behind, the housing complex? Phoenix Court. Okay. And uh, your hours are, are, are what up there, Diana? Monday, beginning um, next week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're open 8 to 4. And on Wednesday, we're open um, 12 to 4. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me just back up a little bit. And what did you do before you became the director of the Council on Aging here in Templeton? I was the uh, admin at the Board of Health. And before that, I um, volunteered at the Council on Aging. I also held um, a position there uh, as a bookkeeper, um, treasurer type person. Um, but I, I um, volunteered. 40 hours a week, I was there all the time and did whatever needed to be That's done. That's full-time employment, 40 <laughs> hours a week of volunteer time. My, um, uh, my dad, I saw, after he retired, I saw him crossing the street one time and he was coming out of a meeting and I said, what the heck are you doing? I'm going to this meeting, going to that meeting. I said, you work now more than, than when you actually worked. And he says, yep, but now I get to say no if I want to. That's right. Um, but in your paid position, you, you don't always get to say no. No, I don't. Us. No, I so don't. So you got, uh, last year we went through uh, some staffing changes. Yes. So let's talk a little bit. I'm not sure people understand what some of those changes were. We actually, working uh, through the, the budget issues of last year, and restructuring who did what and how we do things. Um, we've actually shed some positions up there. Mm -hmm. So why don't you uh, tell folks um, what you have for staff, uh, what the positions are, a little bit about what each one does, and, and how we kind of reorganized that over the past year. So they get a better understanding of uh, the buy that they're getting for their dollar. We have myself, who is, um, my position is 40 hours. I'm a hands-on director. I do um, just about everything. I um, do some of the dispatching. Um, and that's for the, the mark the transportation. Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll touch upon that in some okay. detail here in a little bit. Um, then I have another full-time person, Susan LaJoy. She does um, the majority of her job is supposed to be social service, but she does, she's a hands-on um, person herself, and she does whatever needs to be done. And then I have a part-time, um, 19 and a half hour position, and that is activities, and that is Alicia O'Malley. And she does a fabulous job. Um, she keeps the seniors busy, and that's it. So she, she sets up the bingo or the the classes or whatever mm -hmm. kind of ongoing activities Cards, that you have. Yeah. And, and last year now, um, actually you've redistributed many of the functions. You used to have a, 
uh, about a three-quarter time dispatcher. That's mm -hmm. all they did was dispatch. Yes. Uh, that was, uh, those smart buses and the, yes. the Meals on Wheels program that we'll talk about. Uh, and then you had a half-time bookkeeper. Yes. So in under a year, uh, we've gone, uh, we have lost one and a quarter jobs through reorganization. Yes. Okay. And that's, and that I think you and I chatted about is what's driving a little bit of the uh, change in office hours. Do you want to, not, not office hours, but the, the hours that the center's open to the public. You, you, you want to talk about that change a little bit? Please? Sure. The two positions that we lost are heavily um, involved in statistical reporting. And it's very difficult to be deep into that and then have to answer the phone or get up and go to the window at the reception desk and help someone. Um, so at Carter's suggestion, I looked at the hours and, and when we could maybe um, close the door and not answer the phone and have a, a better ability to work on those statistics and, and get those done and, and be able to better serve our seniors. So we came up with um, Wednesday mornings, and that's what's driving um, the shorter hours on that day, so that we can get those statistics done and better serve our seniors when they're there. It yes. is it, it is always, uh, uh, I, I've found that, you know, if I come in on a Saturday or a Sunday or if, uh, the, the day of the, the snowstorm when no one came to see us, uh, I was talking with one of the offices and I thanked them for, for coming in and they said, oh my goodness, I got so much done today. Yes. So, but even at 36 hours, we'll be open uh, quite a few hours in comparison to many of our surrounding communities. Yes, most, uh, most senior centers are open between um, 36 and 20 hours a week. Um, I, I like the thought of being open as many hours as we can be, um, but I certainly am not opposed to reducing the hours um, in the manner that we have. A little bit of quiet time to get those uh, reports together for the bean counters like me. Uh. Yes, and, and so many, our funding is, is dependent upon those reports being done. Um, and if we don't get those reports done, then um, we don't get our funding which is a good portion of, of why we're able to do what we're able to do. So let's, let's talk about the funding for, that you get from some outside sources, and uh, that can kind of maybe drive a discussion about uh, uh, some of the program offerings. Uh, now, the state of Massachusetts uh, has, a, you, you refer to it as a formula grant. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell folks a little bit about how that money comes through, um, how much it is, what you're able to use it for. The formula grant is based on a formula um, on the census that is done every 10 years. So in the 2010 census, we were um, tallied at having 1,597 seniors over the age of 60. and Every year, we get so much money per senior at um, different um, intervals. They raise that money. Um, this year, we were supposed to get $10 per senior, so we would have gotten $15,970. But because of budget constraints on the um, state level, they reduced that, and um, we didn't quite get that. Um, amount. Um, Governor Baker has pledged that we will get $12 um, per senior. Hopefully this summer we'll see what transpires on, the, on the, uh, that front. But that allows us to do a great deal of our programming. It allows us to um, throw lunches for the seniors, take them um, on trips. We um, do appreciation lunches for our volunteers, which is so very important. Um, 
we pay for um, some of our instructors. We um, pay s some of our um, educational programs for the seniors and ourselves. And we um, pay for um, the cost of our newsletter um, and postage. We, we spend a great deal on postage because um, over the age of 75, you get, a, you get a birthday card in the mail every year. Um, and um, I can't tell you how many seniors say, that's the only card I get. That's the only recognition I get of my birthday every year. And I think, how sad. And, and thank goodness we do that. Because that makes their that makes their day, and uh, so those are the kinds of things that we do with that formula grant, and and they're very very important um, to the seniors. Um, so if if the budget does go through as the governor has submitted, um, you would get roughly around seventeen thousand five hundred eighteen thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, which um, I'll bear in mind when I review your budget. Now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it allows certainly uh, additional programs above and beyond what we're able to support out of the local tax levy. Absolutely. What, what do you call that newsletter? By the buzz. The buzz. Okay. Okay. I was in one community where they called it the Geezer Gazette, which I I thought mm. was kind of nice. Well, no, I I kind of liked it because it uh, gave me a, some official class to kind of mm -hmm. fit into, you know. Uh, so that's that, that state grant that comes through, um, $10, $12 for every uh, one of our 1,500 mm -hmm. and change uh, seniors. And now what, when the state says for our seniors, um, this has always been an interesting discussion in some different communities, what constitutes a senior for the purposes of that state grant? What age? They... They say 60 and up. We reach out to seniors 50 and up. So you follow the AARP rule then? Yes. Okay. Um, the, bo the board, the COA board chose several years ago to reach out to 50 and up because we want to reach out to the baby boomers and um, because they're up and coming and we want to involve them and um, we hear so often, I'm not old enough for the senior center. Well, it's not your grandmother's senior center anymore. <laughs> it's a hopping place. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll come to some of the hoppiness in a little bit, but I wanna, <laughs> I wanna kinda stick on the funding uh, thing. Um, and uh, let, let's talk about the, the MART. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a substantial MART grant Yes. Um, let's let's chat with folks. Many folks may not know what MART means because even though it's on the side of buses, it, you know, we're all busy and they may just not have paid attention. So let's talk a little bit about the MART grant and what you're able to do with that. MART stands for Massachusetts Area Regional Transportation. And um, MART allows us to provide transportation to the seniors to a, a doctor's appointment, a, uh, to go shopping for groceries or whatever they might need, um, recreation, uh, on any number of things. And what Mart does for us is pay 100% of a driver's salary. A, they pay for on one van, they pay for the fuel, they pay for the e upkeep of that van, and they pay for a portion of the administrative cost of the department, which is a substantial amount, but it's not what it used to be. They, on the town-owned vehicles, they still pay for the driver's salary. They do not pay for the fuel and they pay for all of the training of all of the drivers and the training that I have to have as a um, overseer of the program. So 
they ensure that the drivers drive safely. They um, provide drug and alcohol screening for the drivers. They do random checks. We never know until an hour before we have to be at take charge to provide our samples. Um, and sometimes they're difficult to deal with, but they really provide a tremendous service um, for the town. And it's just not seniors. It is disabled individuals also. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're 25, if you're disabled, you're, you're eligible to, to be um, on the MART van. And it, it, it is an unmeasurable um, advantage for those people in need. Now for this program, um, again, I want to talk about what constitutes a senior for this program. Is it the same 60 that the state sets? Is it the 50 that the council's adopted? It's the 50 that we've adopted. Oh, the, it is the 50 that you, okay. So if someone is without transportation for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, uh, they're on a disability or uh, they simply don't have the finances mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to support a vehicle, Transportation in these rural areas is, is really key to surviving. Yes. Um, so uh, you're able to get them to doctor's appointments? Yes. Um, shopping? Yes. Okay. What are the kinds of... So I call you up. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the destination I want to go to where you say, nope, the program doesn't cover it? Uh, I mean, if it, is it basically anything connected with daily living and your need uh, to uh, socialize, take care of your medical needs and the like? If, if we have the availability, um, we can take you to Boston, Worcester, Lemonster. Um, we go to Harvard. We won't go to Springfield. Um, we'll try our best to find another mode of transportation. Um, but... We pretty much go. So what, what, what about Northampton? Let's say we had a disabled vet that needed to get to Northampton and the, the veteran services officer wasn't able to find a volunteer. Or do a, is that something we can assist people with? Absolutely. So pretty much anything along the Route 2 corridor, down to Worcester, down to Northampton, just try to stay out of the metro Springfield area. Right. Okay. How come? I don't know. I, 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 I've never, I've never had anybody I'm, ask to go I'm, to Springfield. I'm, well, you know, I'm the four-year-old in the room asking all these questions. I know all the that. Time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. So um, now, are they uh, all uh, wheelchair accessible? Is, is there a lift? Um, yes. Okay. All three vans have a lift. We do have a car that we use. Um, for people that don't need um, the wheelchair lift, mm -hmm. because it's much more economical. Mm -hmm. um, and that was donated by Friends of the Templeton Elders, yes, correct? Yes. Yeah. About, about 18 months ago or so. Something yes. Like that. Yes. Um, we were very fortunate um, to get that. Mm -hmm. a, a senior um, contacted us and said, I have this vehicle, it's in very good running order. Is this something that you might be interested in? And of course, we contacted our fundraising group and said, hey, can you help us out? And they did. And it's been a tremendous help. So how long um, in advance do I generally need to call you to try to arrange a ride to go to my, my doctor's uh, appointment or uh, my dentist or something? If it's in the local area, Gardner or um, Athol or, you know, in the local area, the day before is generally... So 24 hours, mm -hmm. the morning of the, the prior business, uh, yes. the, of the prior business day kind of thing. Now, if you need to go to Lemonster or Boston or Worcester, we need to know as soon as you've made that appointment because we have to coordinate that and um, we like to... Um, 
may have more than one person going to those destinations at a time if we can to make it more economical and u a better use of the vehicles. In better use of fuel, better use of the vehicles. And the town does have some cost in supporting the program. Yes. Uh, we pay so the, the workers' comp, mm -hmm. and Medicare, unemployment, and some of those costs. So to the extent we can um, combine trips, reduce yes. the number of trips, we can uh, save some of our local share, if you will. Yes. So, so I call you up, and where do, I, where do I call you? Is there a different number than the senior center itself? Nope. You can call any one of the numbers. Whoever answers the phone will um, either be able to make that appointment for you, or they will um, hook, transfer you to myself or um, Sue, and we will be able to book your ride. Okay. So what is that phone number? What's the best phone number up there? 978-894-2780. Okay. And of course, uh, for anyone who can go to the website, they can look those up or uh, call us right here uh, at the Selectman's office and we'll make sure you get that information. So so I call you up and uh, if I'm, you don't go to Boston or Worcester just any day of the week, do you? Or do you have some fixed days? We, we, we would like to go to Boston on Thursdays. On Thursdays. We definitely go every other Thursday. And um, Lemonster and Worcester, we try to go on Tuesdays or Wednesdays. Um, okay. But if your doctor absolutely won't take patients on, you know, a particular day, we're going to work with you. Right. So, so if he's just bound in the term and he's going to be golfing or kayaking on Wednesday. <laughs> You're not going to get there. Okay. So, so I, I call and I talk with you or, or uh, Sue or Alicia and I arrange my transportation. I learn which days uh, of the week are kind of best mm -hmm. if I'm trying to go to Boston or to Worcester. Um, and you, you come and you pick me up? Yes, we pick you up at your door. At the door. Great. And you drop me off? Absolutely. We'll take you... If you need um, help getting to the doctor's office or, or what have you, the driver will help you with that. Um, and he will pick you up again at the same place that he dropped you off. And um, if you have a new prescription, he will take you to the drugstore and drop off your prescription. And depending on how long it will take, you may wait, and then he will take you home. And as an efficiency geek, if the doctor will call the prescription in to the pharmacy, we'll have less time on the road, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. And now, do I have to pay something for this it's service? Cover your ears. It's a free will donation. <laughs> oh, my. Some people pay more. Others can't afford to pay as right. much. Um, but at, at this time, it's a free will donation. So if, if people have the ability to contribute something, um, even if it's a dollar or, or something, if, if they do that, that helps the program out uh, because then we can cover some of these added costs and, and keep, keep offering the program. But there's uh, certainly a lot of folks who, through no fault of their own, uh, simply don't have uh, income level high enough to make those kinds of donations. To be honest, I everyone generally at least gives a dollar. I have known some people that have given much more than that. And um, but but there certainly are many people who are in a circumstance as I say through no fault of their own absolutely. where they simply don't have those those resources. Right. Now, um, this is kind of a unique model of how this service is delivered in this in this region here, and uh, they actually rate the different councils on aging on efficiency or customer satisfaction or several different factors. Um, and you were speaking about that the other night. And what? How was that rating done, and what's it done on? And you guys came out pretty well, if I remember correctly. We are the second most efficient um, council on aging for our um, transportation program, um, both in 
cost of running the program and cost per senior. And they base that on the, the cost that we invoice the, the MARC program every month because we um, work up a, a slew of statistics for them. We bill them for the driver's hours, the fuel, et cetera, phone bills. And they, base, they calculate that based on the number of um, patrons that we transport as well as um, the number of hours that we bill. And we came out extremely well. There are 13 councils on aging that run their own program, transportation program. And to be the second best out of the 13, I think is pretty good. Well, I, th I think that is kudos to you all. But how many people did we transport last year or in a typical year? Um, but uh, well, let me ask you this. How many trips have we given? Because one person, you know, distinct users, we can kind of separate that. But uh, how many trips, uh, transports, would you say you've done? About 32,000. Wow. Now, that's not last year. Is it really? Mm -hmm. So, So how many unique users do you think you have? Um, about 550. So this is one of those services that I'm not sure people really kind of see and understand. Um, so uh, now, um, if if my mom needs a ride or my dad needs a ride, I'm not able to do it, and I want to learn a little bit more, because mm -hmm. my mom or dad kind of don't want anybody to help them, let's say. Um, they both passed on, but we are currently dealing with my 87-year-old, 20 more to go, uh, mother-in-law, who's uh, pretty independent, doesn't want anybody much help her. Can I, can I call you and just chat with you and get a little bit better handle on how the program would work and how I introduce the driver, the idea to mom, and introduce the driver and such? Absolutely. You call, you talk to us. We um, may even call and use another excuse to, to chat with your mother-in-law and the next thing you know we've we've got her a little interested in in the program or maybe something at the senior center that um, she may want to participate in and oh we'll come and get you. Um, and now, you also run a bus so the the, the MART program here um, and that's where we lost the three-quarter time dispatcher. That mm -hmm. person basically only did the dispatch. You, know? mm -hmm. you all have folded that into to your work. Um, that, uh, wow, that's 32,000 rides. That's, uh, that is amazing. Now, we offer some uh, additional programs with the Mart van, don't we? Don't we uh, run a... Uh, run up to uh, Winchenden for a meals site on a given day? We go on Tuesdays and Thursdays for lunch at the Winchenden Senior Center, um, and that's popular. We hope to have the kitchen finished in our own senior center and provide lunch three days a week at our senior center. Um, that is a very social um, event and I, I hope that we can continue to take them to Winchenden um, two days a week because I don't want them to lose that social um, experience that they have with those seniors. Um, but yes, we, we um, provide social experiences. We also, on a bi-monthly basis, are, yes, bi-monthly, provide outings for the senior are the seniors at the Baldwinville nursing home so we pick up between 10 and 12 seniors residents there take them out for an outing and they always stop and have ice cream at the end of their trip and um, they are all very excited about the day that they um, have their outing it's it's a big deal and then they always do a fall foliage trip um, so that's that's uh, Ice, ice cream, eh? Yes. I'm, I'm going to uh, Charleston, West Virginia over Patriot's Day, and 
I told my buddy, I said, well, you know, after we leave York, Pennsylvania, we've got to make a little detour. And he's looking at me. I said, well, got to, got to go to Loganville for Carm's ice cream. So I can certainly <laughs> understand the taste bud there. Yeah. Now, um, so, so we've got the MART program, which provides uh, transport to folks 50 years of age uh, for any basically uh, daily uh, uh, support of your, your life activities need, be it some shopping, the, uh, the, the drugstore, the, the dentist, uh, health care, things like that, um, and for disabled. Mm -hmm. so, so if we could, um, just so that folks all stand there, you know, because they want to, what, is, is there, the seniors, 50, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. what, what constitutes disabled under the terms of the grant uh, that you receive? from Mart? Um, wheelchair bound, I, it could be um, developmental, developmentally delayed, um, any, any, say someone has um, if you get a note from your doctor that says that you're disabled, we are bound by law to allow you to. And again, not to feel shy about it if you're not quite sure, give, it, give you folks a call there. And um, even if they can't uh, help you through the MART program, perhaps we can connect them with some other, some other resources. Mm -hmm. um, I had a gentleman call, it's been about a year, he was taking chemo and he didn't have any way to get there. Well, we took him every day for six weeks. In my mind, that was a disability that he, 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 needed, he needed the help. It's, it's a very draining. Um, certainly, uh, there's the, the isolation. Mm. Uh, and it's uh, exhausting at the end of the treatment, I'm it is. sure. It is. Now, how many drivers do, do you have currently? We, we currently have four. 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 I have one leaving at the end of April. He's, he's going to move to Myrtle Beach. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I hope to hire another one. Um, and so will we be advertising for that, or did we have some folks from the last advertising round? This, um, we have some folks. Okay. okay. Um, and always, uh, if you are uh, semi-retired, you're interested in something like this, give my office a call here at Town Hall. We'll give you an application form, and put it on file. They stay active for six months um, afterwards. Uh, but it can be a nice part-time uh, uh, job, uh, get, put you on the road a little bit, put you in contact uh, with some folks who uh, are very appreciative of the assistance. Now, the other van that we have um, is also, um, uh, you know, uh, on wheels, mm -hmm. and it starts with them, but that's Meals on Wheels. Yes. So let's talk about that a little bit. And, and talk about some of the budgetary challenges from the bean counter side of the of the of the room. Um, let's talk about you know before we even had this budget discussion this year. Uh, how many folks you you deliver five days a week yes. to you? Yes. Okay. Yes, we deliver five meals or five days a week. We deliver um, a variety of different types of meals. It could be a cardiac um, restricted diet, um, a diet geared to um, some with, with someone with kidney disease. We have one now that is a pureed meal. Um, any number, diabetics have a different meal, and along with that, comes with a different type of milk and dessert and, and it's, it can be quite um, daunting at times. But it's one of the most rewarding things that you can do um, 
because those folks are so appreciative and there again, that may be the only person they see on a, on a given day. And more importantly than getting that meal, it's a wellness check. It's security for their family to know that someone saw them and they were okay. And that driver, if, it, if they're off or they didn't answer the door, they come back and tell us or call us and say, hey, so-and-so didn't answer the door and something's just not right. Well, that kicks in a whole series of events and um, it, it could be bad or it could be just that they've gone to the doctor. Now, so, um, you don't cook the meals currently here. No, okay. no, so where, where do we get these meals? They come to us from the Montachusett Opportunity Council. Council. They are catered um, from an organization in Worcester and delivered to the Gardner um, Senior Center. And we pick them up there in a hot, cold truck. So they're held at temperature. And then we deliver them. So um, we have somebody that uh, daily goes over to Gardner picks up those, how many folks are we servicing roughly right now? Eleven. Okay, and that, that census kind of changes a little bit. Um, so eleven's towards, a little bit towards the lower end. But you've had as many people as? Thirty-five to forty. Thirty-five at a given time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we go over, we pick those meals up in the, the Meals on Wheels truck. Mm-hmm. Um, which, as you say, maintains the temperature of the foods, be it hot, be it cold, and then we go out and do a, a delivery loop and five days a week. Yes. Okay. And um, now, let's say that I, I want this, I need this service. Mm -hmm. um, I know that that's one of the things that uh, can, can wear thin and can be a little bit challenging. My my wife cooks the meals, and every night before you got to have it set up. And let's see now, this doesn't go to Spencer. And so, so Granny's meals in the uh, in in the fridge are all ready with the instructions. Um, and I, I know that is actually that's very taxing. She loves her mom, but that can be very very taxing. Yes. Um, so you go over and you get that meal. Uh, now, how does this? You said there's a meal for. This kind of dietary meal need meal for that kind of dietary need. How does how does Mott know this, and how do I it, how do I tell them this? It, you know, what, what kind of conversation is there? How do we set that up? Well, we we can't set that up. We're merely okay. the delivery service. Okay. Um, the family or um, the physician has to call Mock and. Um, set that up with them, they um, have a whole, or they work with um, Montachusett Home Care, and um, they decide together what type of meal the senior needs to have, how often they need to be delivered, et cetera. And then when a senior doesn't answer the door, we call Montachusett Opportunity Council. There are so many acronyms and say, hey, so-and-so didn't answer the door. Are you going to call the family, or do you want us to? And we work with them. So unlike the Mart rides where people call you direct, um, if I wanted to try to arrange something for my, my mother-in-law, we would call Mock to start that process? Yes. Montachusetts Opportunity Council? Yes. Okay. And, and so the best thing to do is to just, if you have access to a computer, look up Montachusetts Opportunity Council, uh, ask to be connected to the meals program. The senior meal program. The senior meal program. Option two. Oh, op option two, when you call them. Um, and then we just get notification that so-and-so has been dropped from the program or so-and-so has been added to the program. We get a, a printout a route list every day um, faxed to us and, and the driver picks that up and then he knows exactly how many meals, what kind of meals he should be picking up and um, he starts his, his route. Okay, and now similar to the, the Mart, uh, Aunt Mart, we do ask for a 
donation within somebody's capabilities. Not everyone has that. Uh, are the meals free? Does Mock ask for a contribution? Mock How does that, that work? Mock asks for a um, $3 donation towards the meals, and they collect that. Um, we don't collect any money. Okay, so, so I, I send them a check or I mm -hmm. do whatever I do to mm -hmm. pay them, and that's, um, that's a contribution per meal. Mm -hmm. And um, now what if, what if I just simply don't have the resources to even do that, um, given, you know, heat or medications or others? Uh, is Mock able to waive some of that yes. or provide a, yes. they, an offset of some fashion? They receive grants and um, donations, so they're able to um, waive that. Okay. And I know that that's, I, I will, you know, in the interest of full disclosure, uh, as the bean counter, uh, looked at the cost of that program, and I know we're in the process of trying to see if there's some way to continue to deliver this very valuable service, but at a, a, a lower cost of some mm -hmm some fashion. So let's talk now, so we've talked about uh, where some of the money comes from, the MART program, which is uh, transportation uh, to support our daily uh, uh, needs. Um, we've talked about the Meals on Wheels. And again, is that over 60 as well, or is that over 50 based upon your service definition? How does that? Meals on Wheels is, um we don't have any say in who does or doesn't get Meals on Wheels. But do you know, the, is there a basic cutoff where I shouldn't bother to call them? Do you know? It's, it's going to depend on their need. The individual person. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, all that happens outside of the center. Mm -hmm. uh, and we got lots of things that happen in the center. Uh, let's let's start with uh, with the food pantry a little bit. Um, that is uh, something that um, I, I found uh, interesting that the town would run when I first came here. But but that is a decision the town's made. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit because that was moved into the new senior center from a small building mm -hmm. that sat behind the. Um, the old fire station, yes? Yes, it was. Um, the food pantry has always been a part of the Council on Aging. When they were in Scout Hall, it was in the basement there. Um, and then they moved it to the church next door, and it was flooded out, so they moved it into the garage. Those darn basements will get you, won't they? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> So they moved it to the garage, and it, it was located there until they could move it into the senior center where it is now. And um, it's working very well there. The community is very supportive of the, um, of the food pantry. Just today we received almost 1,600 pounds of food that was collected um, for, at Palm Sunday by a local church. Um, which is a tremendous a lot of, a, f amount of food, and it, it will be used. Um, and they were very careful to check the dates because of the USDA guidelines. We can't um, give any food out that is past the um, expiration date. We are run solely on donations. We take no money from the town. Um, the community um, does donate um, funding, and we use that to buy groceries from Market Basket. We do not get a um, cheaper rate. We pay the same thing that you would pay if you were going to the grocery store. We, um, the community donates food and we buy meat um, from a local um, butcher wrapped in one pound packages that um, when someone comes in once a month, depending on the size of your family, you will get a predetermined amount of um, 
Hamburg. Um, depending on your size of your family, you also get a certain amount of groceries. The food pantry is not was not formed to to subsidize your um, monthly grocery needs. It was meant to be a um, emergency service. Unfortunately, um, it became known to us, or we realized, I should say, that people were dependent on it for a monthly, um, like going to the grocery store. So we instituted guidelines. And in order to be eligible to come to the food pantry now, you must be able to qualify for SNAP, which is the old food stamps. And when you qualify for SNAP, you bring us proof of that letter and then you, you will be able to receive food from the food pantry. Um, people are more generous now than they were before knowing that we have some sort of guidelines. We didn't have those until um, about three years ago and it, it has certainly made a difference. And um, the, the food pantry is, uh, it's, it provides a huge service and we try to have a small garden to help subsidize with fresh produce. Um, our gardener that we had last year is not going to do it this year, so if anyone would like to um, help with the garden, we would certainly like to um, have your help. But that's, that's the food pantry in a nutshell. Do, do you use the, the Worcester County Food Bank at all, or is that just kind of, I know that's a pretty good stretch away we do not use um, the Worcester County Food Pantry because, food bank, because they, um, when they sell you the food, they weigh the packaging. So that's included in the price of the food. And when you buy their food, it's always right on the cusp of expiration. And um, we did at one time try that and the food would expire before we were able to because of the volume that you do, the turnover. So right. if you're a, a much larger provider, closer to Worcester, you can get there easier. Right. Uh, I know um, at my wife's church, they're like there two, three times a week, kind of. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's down in the basement. Mm -hmm. um, you, you go around the building to the back of that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the main floor. And I know you're a little concerned um, about uh, uh, the time. Uh, but we've only got about 12 minutes left, believe it or not. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the kinds of activities uh, that go upstairs. Well, we have a couple of card games. They play pitch and cribbage and crafting. Um, we have today, as a matter of fact, stained glass lessons with Rick Trifolo. He's a phenomenal artist. Um, yoga, meditation. Uh, we're going to have Zumba starting soon. We have line dancing. The Golden Agers have their meetings there twice a month, plus they have bingo. Today is bingo. Um, we have jewelry making. Um, we have a manicurist, and she also does reflexology treatments. Um, she comes in once a month. She is also trained um, um, to care for um, diabetic feet and people that are going through cancer um, treatments and such. Um, we have a monthly book club meeting. We have once a month the um, vet support group luncheon. Um, then, um, this is outside of the building, but we coordinate it. It's the rodeo um, club, and that's real old dames eating out. <laughs> And then we have the Romeo Club that we're starting, and that's real old men eating out. <laughs> uh, Nothing says social like eating together, right? That's right. That's right. So um, we have a plethora of, of activities going on inside, and then you, you have the social, uh, or the social services aspect of things. Um, we provide wellness checks. Um, we provide social services. Um, there are many things that, that go on at the Senior Center that I can't talk about. Um, 
but that goes on daily. And um, Alicia uh, puts a lot of those programs yes. together. You were saying that's that halftime yes. uh, person. Yeah. Yes. How many, how many users? I know I, I just can't remember the statistics uh, from the other evening. You were in front of the, the select board and the advisory committee for your budget hearing. Uh, how, many, um, uh, how many users do we have? We average between 20 to 35 a day, depending on the day and the activity. Um, but 20 to 35 people a day is, is... And those are basically all Templeton. I know there was a question as to whether or not folks from out of town use the facility as well. Uh, basically Templeton. Um, pitch is a big draw, and you may have some people from surrounding towns to, to play pitch, but they have a circuit. And they go to other um, towns to play pitch, um, and my Templeton folks go, you know, follow the circuit also. So, um, playing cards is a big deal. Now, um, this a lot of things that happen in a in a small facility, from um, you know the card games to the Meals on Wheels program to the food pantry to all these programs that you've spoken of and uh, we've also spoken about the staff cuts mm -hmm. that we've had. Mm -hmm. Some of that was through reorganization of mm -hmm. activities. Mm -hmm. Some of that will be like by uh, having a few quiet time hours. Mm -hmm. um, but you have, you have volunteers that currently do things there to help support the center. Are you in need of folks to volunteer to do specific things? Not only come use the services, but perhaps provide some assistance in, in, in putting those services on? Um, yes. We need volunteers to work at our reception desk. You would greet the seniors as, as they come in and, and maybe help them learn to sign in and um, assign a key card. We use little key cards like you would use at the grocery store, so you sign in and sign out when you leave. Um, you could help Alicia with the, si the setting up of activities and breaking them down. Um, there, we always need help with the newsletter. We have a program call, called the Friendly Visitor where you could um, visit with someone who is a shut-in or someone help with respite. That's always um, huge, a huge service. Um, we need bakers. Um, we like to provide baked goods to, say, a widow or even a widower, mostly widowers, who have lost their wives and nobody bakes for them anymore, you know, and, and they miss that. Um, we need people to escort seniors to the doctor. Um, if you're in a wheelchair, you can't, we don't allow them to ride on the van by themselves. They need somebody to um, help push the wheelchair, you know, through the hospital because our driver's not always available to do that. So we like to have an escort go along. So those are some of the volunteer activities um, that we have available. So I know these are these are challenging budget times. Actually, I don't think I've worked in municipal government when it wasn't a challenging economic uh, time. Um, and there will be a lot of, that you'll see and hear over the coming uh, four to six weeks about which department uh, has to figure out how to do something uh, with less or simply not do something. So we certainly uh, encourage you to watch all of those discussions. Uh, Diane, um, I think we've really pretty much covered everything from the, the beginning to the end. Have we left anything out here? I can't think of anything. Okay. So uh, this has been Diane Morrison, who's the uh, director of the Senior Center uh, under the Council on Aging, works closely with the Friends of the Templeton Elders. Uh, my name's Carter Terenzini. I'm the town administrator here in, in Templeton. I want to thank you for joining uh, me here today, taking a little bit of your time. Uh, the program next month is going to concentrate on the town meeting. Uh, we did one last fall. We called it Question Time. We'll probably stick with that 
uh, again in which uh, Steve Castle was kind enough to, to join me for an hour. And, um, you know, maybe we can suck him into doing it again this time. We'll see. Uh, but where we take the warrant and we kind of walk through each item, have a little bit of a discussion of, uh, uh, you know, what the items mean and what they're driven by and what their financial impact is. Uh, as always, if you have a question about anything, stop in at Town Hall. Uh, send us an email at townadministrator uh, at templeton1.org. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day.